if Cruz is not deployed. In Britain, some people believe that the campaign for nuclear disarmament is another aspect of the Soviet propaganda machine. The allegation is a powerful weapon in the peace war. I think there is no doubt that all the arguments, all the propositions that they put forward have had their origin in the Soviet Union. One only has to look at the makeup of Parliament today. There isn't a single Communist uh, Party member. Uh, something like a quarter of the top echelon of CND uh, is uh, or has been until recently act active card-carrying members of the Communist Party. CND Vice President and Communist Party member John Cox prefers to talk about the arguments rather than who's behind them. Well, essentially, they appear to have lost the moral argument and are now trying smear tactics. In what form? Well, instead of uh, taking part in a debate about what the nature of nuclear weapons are, the fact that no one could possibly survive a nuclear war, they uh, are trying to get people to say there's ulterior motives behind what is essentially a moral crusade. Enjoy the trip! Mrs. Thatcher is certain she can win the argument, and she's lined up a team of ministers to help her. She appointed her best public orator, Michael Heseltine, to take on CND. And Mrs. Thatcher has launched a three-pronged attack on national opinion. Winston Churchill MP has set up a new committee to coordinate government and independent efforts in the anti-CND campaign. John Selwyn Gummer MP has been told to defeat the drive towards unilateralism within the Anglican Church. And Armed Forces Minister Peter Blaker has been preparing plans for a controversial advertising campaign costed at £1 million and has begun a nationwide tour asking for more space on the news pages. Mr Blaker has been telling editors that the government has been losing the battle for headlines. He's anxious to get more coverage of the government line. Among the journalists Mr Blaker invited to lunch was Martin Dawes of the Sheffield Star. COD is covering all the headlines. It's quite easy to do. You send uh, letters to newspapers, you make statements, uh, you have demonstrations. It's very difficult for the government to counter on that score, short of organising um, pro-bomb uh, groups in each area. Of course, it's just not on. What did Mr Blaker uh, get out of it in return, do you think? Headlines. Uh, got quite a bit of coverage uh, in the press and on, on television and radio in this few days following the event. It's not as if the Warsaw Pact has been content to match our deterrent. It's Newsmen were also shown another weapon in the government's propaganda armory. The peace game cost £80,000 to make and is circulating in women's institutes, businesses and schools. The Western world looked on the ruins of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August 1945 and swore that such a horror must never happen again. Before even 12 months had passed, America had offered an agreement to scrap every one of her remaining atom bombs. Russia refused the offer. If they were to spend that sum of money on a film advocating their policy on employment and inflation, which is clearly a partisan point of view opposed by the uh, official opposition, then there'd be an outcry. But they are prepared to spend public money without our sanction to put a partisan point of view on the issue of nuclear weapons. I think it's quite wrong. But the government would, of course, say that the peace game is only one contribution to the debate and it's being shown in schools and places like that, but that other propaganda from the other side can equally be shown there. It can't equally be shown because we don't have the same resources, but the government in 1978 agreed to the UN resolution which said there should be money spent by all governments on peace education and they suggested